In this video, we're going to talk about solving for the missing coordinate of a parametric equation. So in this one, I'm, we're going to have three examples we're going to run through. Each one, I would highly encourage you to pause the video when we start the example, see if you can figure out on your own, and then you know hit play, watch, and see if you get the right answer. If you want to skip ahead and just see if you got the right answer, also not a bad idea. So our first example here, you're given a parametric equation, x equals 2t plus 4 and y equals 1 half t minus 6. And so these are the, this is the parametric equation. Then it also tells us there's a coordinate blank comma 10, and we need to figure out what that blank is. Well, we know that the y value is 10, so what I'm going to do is use the y part of the parametric equation, plug in 10 for y, and then solve for t. So let's do that to start with. 10 equals 1 half t minus 6, and to solve for 6, I'm just going to add, sorry, solve for t, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So I get 16 equals 1 half t, and then I'm going to cancel out the multi multiplying by a half, so I'm going to multiply by 2 to cancel that out, and 16 times 2 is 32. So at time t equals 32, the y value is 10. And it's not necessarily time, you know, we talked about that the parameter isn't always time, but typically it's time. So, uh, the next part is we know that t equals 32. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my x equation, plug it in, and figure out what x would be. So x equals 2 times 32 plus 4. And as long as you do your order of operations correctly, you're good to go. 2 times 32 is 64. 64 plus 4 is 68. So, in this set of parametric equations, one of the points on there is going to be 68 comma 10. And that happens when time equals 32. All right, so let's look at a couple more examples. Each one getting a little bit more unique and challenging. So on example 2 here, uh, different parametric equation. This time I give you the x, so since I give you the x, we're going to work with the x equation to start out with. So since x is 5, I'm going to start by typing and plugging in 5 for x. So 5 equals 1 half e minus 4 squared plus 3. And then we just solve for t, just like we did on example number 1. So subtract 3 from both sides. 5 minus 3 is 2. And then the other side is 1 half e minus 4 squared. And then we're going to multiply by 2 on both sides to cancel out multiplying by a half. Those are reciprocals of one another. And I get 4 equals, in parentheses, t minus 4 squared. And then we need to cancel out the squaring. So I'm going to square root both sides. And I get square root of 4 is 2 or negative 2. Remember, it's plus or minus 2. And then we get t minus 4 on the other side. So then I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get t all by itself. And I'm going to end up with two different answers. So if t, if we're dealing with 2 instead of negative 2, 2 plus 4 is 6. So at time 6, the x value will be 5. But if we're dealing with negative 2, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So at time 2, the x value is also 5. So there's two different times when x equals 5. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plug both 2 and 6 into the y equation and figure out what that y value is. So let's start with t equals 2. We've got y equals absolute value of 2 plus 7 minus 4. And so absolute value of 2 plus 7, that's 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. So one of the points when x is 5 is 5 comma 5. The other time is when equals 
t equals 6. So be y equals absolute value of 6 plus 7 minus 4. So it'll be y equals, equals 13 minus 4, which is 9. So the other point would be 5 comma. All right, so a little bit different than the first example. This one, you get two examples because we end up with a plus or minus situation because we took the square root of a square. All right, let's look at the third example. And this third example has some trig involved. We've got x equals 2 cosine t and y equals negative sine t plus 2. It tells us the y part of the coordinate. So that means that I'm going to start with the y part of the parametric equation solve for t, and so on. So once again, I encourage you to pause the video, try this one on your own, and if you can't get it, then, you know, unpause it, and I'll help you through it. So we're going to plug in 1.52 in for y, equals negative sine t plus 2, and then we're going to start out by subtracting 2 from both sides, and I get 0 0.48 equals negative sine t and then I'm going to multiply by negative 1 to get rid of that negative. I get negative 0 0.48 equals sine t and then lastly to get t by itself I'm going to do the inverse sine of both sides so it'll be the inverse sine of negative 0 0.48 equals t. So this one, I'm definitely going to need a calculator. I don't know what the inverse sine of negative 0.48 is. And so I'm going to pull up my calculator here. And on this one, I'm just going to do, well, first of all, I want to make sure my mode is in, let's see here. Come on. Oh, I already have some work from before. So I want to make sure my mode is in radians. There wasn't anything that stated this was degrees, so I'm going to assume it's radians. So. I'm going to do inverse sine of negative 0 0.48. And we'll leave it there. We get negative 0.5, basically. Okay, so let's head back to the work we were doing. That means when t equals negative 0 0.5, that's when the parametric equation. Uh, will give us 1.52 for the y value. All right, uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug that in to the x part. So let's do that. Let's plug it into the x part of the equation and figure out that point. So uh, we get x equals 2 times cosine of negative 0 0.5. Pull back up the calculator. 2 cosine negative 0 0.5 or negative 0.5. And I get 1.76 approximately if I round correctly. So uh, my x value is going to be 1.76. And there you have it. Hopefully those three examples uh, get you what you need to know for solving for missing coordinates. Thank